tends to do a lot, and it doesn't always work. Well, we're going to figure out where we're going for game number four. And in fact, you know, is Simplicity able to turn things around here? Gale Force sending us to Sky Temple for what could very much be game point, match point here between these two teams. Sky Temple, to be honest with you, I don't have any immediate thoughts in one way or the other for either one of these teams. I feel like, if anything, I would give, you know, Gale Force Esports probably the upper hand because I think they've shown draft-wise that they're very, very clever uh, with a lot of their decision-making happening here today. Unless Simplicity can really rely on that team fighting, you know, we get that safer play out from Zuna here. I feel like a, a Gale Force got to feel comfortable. I, mean, I really thought that we might see Simplicity really values that first pick. I really thought we might see a Towers. It's uh, Gale Force is one of their most played maps. They're not bad. I think they're four and six coming into this weekend. It's not like they're bad on it, and, but that's normally kind of like the simplicity of like, hey, wait a minute, things aren't going our way. This is our lives are on the line. They always go to Towers. This time they're willing to concede and take first pick. So they definitely have something up their sleeve if they think they're going to get that. Now with Sky Temple. Ben, you know anything about Abather? Yeah, I know a little bit about Abather. I uh, saw, uh, saw an article not too long ago. Pretty good on Sky Temple, especially one of his seven talents there. If uh, if you don't play well around Meal, if you don't force down those structures, it could be a huge problem. You guys do that probably. There was a game on Sky Temple not too long ago. I think there was there was a, a game that or series that weekend where somebody just wasn't taking the structures. Then you guys came in. And you're like, look, we're not we're not having any of that. And you just would literally bully down those lanes and take down anything that Mule was on. Yeah. Sometimes in comms, you know, Cattle's just like, guys, they're healing this fort. We're taking it down, <laughs> or we're die we'll die trying. You know. <laughs> so it works out well for us most of the time, but. You never know. Sometimes you die trying. It worked out really well for you guys the last time it happened. Because I'm like, this is the one way you need to do this, right? Tempo Storm is doing this the exact way you possibly should. So you guys definitely know how to deal with it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but we might, you know, if we don't see the mule, is there any other picks? I'm trying to think when it comes to Sky Temple itself. Not really. It is a map that you can get a macro advantage and be able to snowball your lead through macro. But typically, that's got to be one through an immediate skirmish. Uh, and then beyond that point, it's just got to be, you know, look out for globals if they happen. The one thing I would like to see from these two teams, especially on the side of Gale Force, is a bit more control out of their rotations between uh, first shrine phase and second shrine phase around the giant night game. Uh, I feel like a lot of teams have suffered at being able to apply effective pressure. And since Gale Force is more of that kind of macro S team, that would be the area that if they're going to further their kind of advantage, uh, that I expect them to kind of do it. Yeah, with Simplicity having the first pick here, it should be interesting. Honestly, looking uh, through the series, I feel like there's been heavy garage pressure, obviously, but the more I look at it, the more I feel like uh, Calf might be better suited on a different tank. I feel like he's not making quite the same amount of impact as uh, like Fury would be having on the garage in particular, whether that's due to team compositions or something else, I'm not sure. but. Simplicity might want to try to take one of those Medivh Maev picks instead and just give Fury the Garrosh uh, and have Calf on a different tank. I feel like that might work out a little bit better for them, but we'll see what they do. Tyrell and ETC have been very much prevalent in King Caffeine's hero pool. I think it's, uh, I, I agree with your point, because Garrosh in this one and more of the open area, he's more of a target practice in this one because it's hard to initiate. So we'll see if that does come into play. Maev, looks like they're not going to play around it, but I do wonder, you know, will we get an ab of their play? You know, obviously with Abather, then it brings up the likes of maybe a Grey Man and then Abathers generally. Although I think we've seen a switch up. I think we saw Zuna on an Abather one game. I want to be. Towers. I think I recall that. I can definitely tell you Zuna has played the Abather in the past. I, it's not something I would not put it past the members of Simplicity. It's not like, a, oh, can we get this past? Somebody will break out the Abather. Really curious. It's been a while. And it's a hero that sometimes is a little bit more relevant in other regions. But, oh, well, Michael, you don't false that. If worse comes to worse, you need a global. If you need to try and match something, kind of wonder if we'll ever get that again. Sky Temple's a map where his play style, especially with the wingman adjustments, I feel like could really be problematic on Sky Temple. But then when you look at how the camp priority is adjusted when the 2018 changes came in, I actually think he lost probably quite a bit of value because it used to be really problematic if you could backdoor your Giants or your Knights at all. Sky Temple, your entire second Shrine phase is just set back miles. But now, because of the timing of how that all functions and how high a priority those are to make an impact, I don't know if you could get the same kind of cheeky wingman uh, impact that he used to have. But we do have a global in this game. Simplicity with the first pick onto that Dahaka. 
Yeah. At least they're avoiding the, the Garrosh, at least the priority so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the, the Haka pickup. Um, you know, going with first pick and staying with the bands that have kind of been consistent throughout the whole series, that shows that whatever they're going to first pick here, um, they thought that this was, you know, very crucial to them over the map pick. So whether it be Towers of Doom or whether it be Sky Temple, they wanted to first pick something, and that something was the Haka, which, you know, I agree with. That's a very strong pick on Sky Temple if you can control the macro game. So Malfurion keeps the door open, I think, for a potential Tracer down the road. Obviously, Tracer does like to have room to work. Since her changes, the slight rework and making her more of an auto attack sustain style, the open areas definitely are really good. Uh, again, obviously, I think it's, is there a Hanzo on the other team? Is there maybe a Gray Man with his level seven? Is there a Phoenix? We'll see as that unfolds. But the Dahaka, obviously a strong start to control that solo. So really curious where we're going to get B-Kid at this point. Blaze obviously always going to be that safety option, but if that's not available, Thrall, Mouth Ale, Sonya, not as appealing on Sky to me. I'm really, I'm honestly, I'm pretty curious as to what we see for simplicity in this 2-3. With the Dahaka as that first pickup here and the Garrosh already being threatened over to the other side, do you still commit to the Tyrio this high up or is it not even worth that? Do you let it go later and be willing to, you know, kind of see if they commit a ban in that direction? Because I can definitely tell you this is one of those maps when we're talking about do you, Johanna? I just say no, never, don't touch it. It, it. There's very few cases where you can get that macro. They go with the ETNC instead and then pairing it with an Uther. I mean, it's gonna, hmm, that's interesting. I feel like they have to have something to gain more value out of the Divine Shield, so immediately maybe something like a, you know, Genji comes to mind. But this is a very close to what we saw on Cursed Hollow kind of draft from Simplicity, and uh, Gale Force Esports is pretty good with it. Yeah, I mean, hopefully this time Simplicity keeps an eye out for that Cassio last pick <laughs> yeah. there. But, I mean, the Uther pick is just coming in. It's it's a pretty good defensive option. It's very strong against Garrosh Malfurion. You know, D-Shield is good against that cleanse, even Guardian of the Ancient King. All of those things are really strong against that Garrosh Mouth throw root style of uh, pick composition. But, yeah, we'll have to see what they decide to pair that Uther with. Good Gar their ban. Did make its way here. So, no real surprise there. But, again, the Cassia pickup. The Jaina has been... And Guild Force just lives and dies by that Jaina. Just absolutely lives and dies by it. Into an Uther, you always wonder, like, Jaina's burst damage, Uther's there. Are you willing to, to give it up? Get Not B this time. We get B-Kid over on the Blaze. Then we get ourselves a Hanzo again oh, no. here for Guild Force Esports. Talk about a pretty strong draft on the side of GFE. Yeah. I, I mean, those are terrifying. I mean, they're almost all Team 1 within the role, it feels like. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in if you're Simplicity because everything you want to pick that synergizes really well with Uther is really bad when GFE just <laughs> last picks the Cassia here. So because they chose not to ban it, I wonder how they're going to deal with this. I almost feel like GFE has them in like a draft, you know, choke code. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, and I was starting to wonder if maybe part of the reason we saw, you know, the adjustment for simplicity as well is based on the fact that they, with the second pick or first pick slot, that they can make sure that the Jaina doesn't go over to Gale Force Esports by having that extra ban. But is it really worth it, especially when we see how this kind of draft is unfolding? If your 1-3 is going to be that off meta priority, I don't really know if you can let that even kind of happen because then your first three picks are so far back. The objective strength that Gale Force got and the ban didn't really cater towards the meta either. Gale Force's Ow. draft is terrible. You know, oh, okay. I was going to say, they're going to go full tempo and bust out the Kerrigan. I didn't want to be the one to say it, especially when I look over at Ablaze, Garrosh, all this. But I was feeling it, right? I was feeling Zuna's like, look, I'm doing it, and it doesn't matter if it if we go out on it, but I'm doing it. In my mind, I was thinking it. I should have said it. That's brave. I still don't believe it. <laughs> so you realize that this is a full-on heavy commitment Planet Cracker game, right? You remember that false head you were talking about before? Would be wonderful. Wouldn't mind him now. Oh, you want to engage? Well, too bad. Yeah, not today. Global doesn't gain too much value in the process. I mean, just do not get Kerrigan comboed is the biggest thing. It's a high-risk pick, but... Might be something that Gale Force want. Definitely one of the few drafts that we've seen where I'm like, ooh, might want to come to light here. If we see them go outside of that route with the Jaina already taken up, what backliner can they get to get all that damage to get to the one Cassia, shot in the Kerrigan? Yeah. 
I if you like get Ca stunned, you get blind. Cassie is not nearly as good, I feel like, in that type of situation compared to the Jaina or anything alike. But we get ourselves a thrall. A little bit of earthquake action potentially here. It's not bad. I mean, they're just drafting tanky. They want the Hanzo behind like very tanky targets, and the Kerrigan can only combo the front line, which should theoretically be hard to kill. I can see where they're going with that. Yeah. It's another all-in composition. Here, Zuna is just like, well, if all else fails, I'm going Kerrigan. What was his interview like a week or two ago? He's like, yeah, he's like, I don't really play the carry heroes anymore. I just kind of do what my team tells me to play. It very much in comms at this point, I think he's saying, yeah, I'm, I'm playing Kerrigan. I, I don't know. I, I can tell you this <laughs> much. Like uh, when Fan was saying, you know, that all the members of Simplicity have been in Hero League left and right. I've, I've matched a couple of times in Azuna and every game he was on Kerrigan. So I, I know that he's been practicing it. That much is definitely going to be, uh, you know, something that Simplicity has got in their mind. But it's just three-man melee Uther composition with a solo backline Phoenix on Sky Temple when the momentum's already against you. Is that going to be enough to keep your dreams of the midseason brawl alive? Train. I'm just. I'm gonna leave it as a uh, slim, slim. I, you know, I, I'm. I'm. I'm just gonna say probably not. Actually, yeah. tranquility as long as it gets popped early, the same way it did on Curse Hollow. I think is very, very strong. You've got the bunker to fall back on. And again, I think the Planet Cracker. It's an all-in one, one trick here. I mean, you've got a little bit of other elements, but we'll see. We'll find out. Game number four here. Gale Force Esports up one game against Simplicity, and one game away from again kind of. Crushing the dreams of simplicity, if you will, towards that midseason brawl. Whatever team wins here, Jay Howe, for any fans at home that haven't kind of kept track of our playoff ladder system, the victor of this series will in fact take on Team Freedom. And then, you know, tomorrow we work our way even farther up the ladder. I mean, that's today, too. Yeah, I mean, that's the exciting they, thing. We're not done today. Back I mean, to back, boys. Whoever, they get a full round of games in, we'll see Gale Force again, Dread. They they ride the momentum wave. We've seen a lot of peaks and valleys, but when they're at their peak, I mean, they can be as good as anybody here in North America. See if they can maybe continue that trend as we uh, get kind of everybody hanging out, checking out the eye here, getting vision control on the side of Gale Force. To be honest, I am pretty impressed that Gale Force was willing to control that eye. Uh, I look at that composition on the side of Simplicity, and the only thing other than the brush stock and knowing Dahaka is not going to make it there in time without using the cooldown, and you can hear the cooldown if he ends up using it, I just go, uh, yeah, we aren't going to mess around with this. They win the level one, so let's back out of there. Simplicity played it a little bit more passive, though, not want to cater towards that. It's not that it really is that big of a setback where normally I highlight these moments. I go, you know, this lack of a Giants is going to set them back. This is, and That's just more of like a confidence from GFE, being able to walk up to this and just be like, eh, we aren't too afraid. Well, Fury is like, look, they're going to be in my face. It's probably unlikely I'm going to hit the end of my groundbreaker on these people. So uh, I'm going to go extra toss range. Obviously changing it up a little bit and uh, see if he can maybe displace somebody, get some uh, aggressive throws. Also could be good to throw them away from your team when you're all in. So we'll see how that goes as the game goes on. But both teams prioritizing their giants here. Not a whole lot else. Blaze has actually done a really good job of at least controlling the lane, controlling the eye, and by controlling that eye, he hasn't really worried about gank, so he's been able to rotate between that top mid a lot so far. I would expect that probably a large majority of that, you know, level one talent focus from the Garrosh is probably going to be on the Kerrigan. Uh, just to be able to get the flip over because the Kerrigan is, you know, she has to use her gap closer most of the time to get the combo out, so she has no way ability to be able to retreat afterwards. Throws down the combo, and she's pretty easy kill. Even if you just get a Divine Shield or some major cooldown out of the Uther in the process, it typically is going to be able to work out as long as she doesn't have her combo. That's something I think a lot of people, uh, you know, kind of overestimate or underestimate maybe, uh, just misjudge about Kerrigan is the Maelstrom. It does do quite a bit of damage. It's mainly her survivability. It buys time for the second combo. So if you see that first one go down, even if she pops Maelstrom, kill her. She, she's going to struggle. You know, the same way we kind of saw in the, the first game, the Divine Shield target. Is it going to be a Genji or is it going to be the ETC for the potential Mosh? This time, you got to ask yourself that question. If you want to get that reset on that cooldown, are you going to need that Divine Shield? As Michael Udall, he's going to get slid upon. He's going to get combo. This could be first blood, and it is. Here's Simplicity making the rotation, controlling that vision. Michael Udall unable to make it out. But again, will it be the Kerrigan potential Divine Shield to really try and wreak havoc in there? And look at this pressure on the top half of the map with that Night Cam not only getting the kill, but how much siege damage they're going to be able to get out with Hosi there on that Phoenix. This is a great start here to Sky Temple for Simplicity. A lot of momentum in their favor. They just can't let go after this first shrine phase ends up getting the spawn. 
They even have control over I as well. I mean, that's going to stop a lot of the rotations towards Maiden because positionally they have the early shots on the top half. I mean, Jay Ao, there's about nothing more you can ask for an early game on Sky Temple. Uh, Tahaka obviously there. You know, we'll see if we see that rotation. If you see Blaze make that rotation to the bot lane, Tahaka then, you might see a rotation out of simplicity. It's one of the things that you can abuse that global. The minute you see that Blaze come down, you're like, guys, we got numbers. Let's make something happen. But right now, they've got the Uther and the Kerrigan on that top temple. So unwilling to commit, I think, thus far, is Dahaka just going to play that double lane? So hit level 7 here momentarily. Simplicity, though, as you said, with that push dreadnought, generally opens it up for you to get the first four to the game by taking that top temple. But I would raise a kind of counterpoint uh, towards the, all the, you know, optimism and praise I have towards Simplicity. What When you hear a Kerrigan melee composition like this, when I ask you the power spikes in moments of lethality, where do you assume them to be? Level I, one. It's starting <laughs> at one and it's stopping at nine, right? <laughs> We're in that time frame right now. And how many skirmishes did you see attempted over the two Shrine phases? Not Simplicity much, was willing much. to trade. And though that, again, with the winning, with, they're winning the game right now because they got that early siege, they got that one pick. But you've got to be asking yourselves, are you getting as much as you could out of these situations? Because your comp doesn't scale. It eventually will have problems. Hold up, though. Flip over. A little bit of damage there. Zuna able to get the combo kit back. Wow, a nice drag attempt there. But power slide through it, and Garrosh here ends up going down. Responded to the call of the skirmish. You know, that was initiated, though, by Fury. Used his indomitable in. Got the toss back. But you could see Kerrigan coming in. I think might have missed the stun part of that combo. But Prismat obviously landing the tongue. You saw the nature's cure. And then the power slide in from King Caffeine. So ultimate coordination, I mean, that's one of those things. Overlapping CC is sometimes a thing, but we saw Simplicity very patient there, able to confirm the kill, and, you know, they've got themselves a full level lead. We'll see if they try and take more control. I mean, we're going to see them round the, you know, common problem of the I lost a level pre-10, you know, what happens around the second try phase. That There's going to be a huge spike with 10 advantage in favor of Simplicity that Gale Force pretty much has to give up. To be honest, j -Hal, if I'm Simplicity, I'm worried about how do I make sure I get middle four and bottom four at the end of the Shrine phase all at the exact same time to make sure I get a triple four play. And that's all I'm worried about. So much so that I, at this point in time, once I get this clear, I wouldn't mind if we rotated mid, prep that middle wave a little bit more because we know know that this thing is going to be given up the minute we tick over. They're sitting maybe a minion wave, minion wave and a half out from that 10 spike. Here we go. Simplicity with level 10. We actually, you know, the big thing is, this is one of those things with the gameplay changes, ah. Dread. Generally, the level 10 is for both teams at this point. But because there was no skirmish on that temple phase, there was no delay. Generally, if it's delayed out, more time goes by, more teams get closer to 10. This is one of the rare circumstances where we saw a completely neutral trade. And again, you, you want to play for that fort, which is nice. Oh, Planet Cracker. Zoning Planet Cracker is what we'll call that. Yeah, it was a fraction of an inch off, I think. <laughs> Just a little. Oh, either that or he expected the gate to drop a little bit earlier. Either way, the Zoning Planet Cracker was effective at zoning. Nobody crossed that line. And uh, now the boss picked up there for Simplicity. And the camp. And rotating down to be able to get a lot of those shots in the bottom half of the map. I would have liked to see Simplicity in that situation. Once they start with the 10 advantage, start the boss and see the four-man rotation, just start pushing mid after you pick up the boss. Be like, fine, you don't want to take shots, we'll let you get this. But we're, again, we're going to double fort. We're going to be able to set this up. Taking the shots on bottom, they're still going to get that double fort. They'll still have the siege pressuring towards the middle half of the map. It's just that they don't get threat towards that key front wall and the 13 spike that I think they might have had a big enough lead to be able to bank on. No matter what, though, Simplicity has an offensive death ball composition that is winning, winning structurally. From beginning to end, this game has got to be feel very, very good from their side. Dahaka, he's Except trying to get this. out of here. He's going to go down Fury. for the moment. Fury, there's going to be the kill onto Dahaka. That is ragdoll mechanics if I've ever seen it. They end up not getting the fort, but the response from Gil Force was almost perfect, right? They forced the rotation out. That camp they knew was spawning soon. You saw the ping onto it. They picked up the camp, forced out the defense in that top lane. The remaining shots picked up here by Gale Force. I think Simplicity needed to cut their losses a little bit earlier. You know, we saw the sniff out between. Wait a minute. This is cleanse use. Cleanse use on both sides. Yeah. I mean, that. If, again, we talk about power sliding to the safe side. There's the old uh, bump and slide there by King Caffeine, unable to isolate the target, though. We started that last shrine phase, j Hal, with a full level spike in favor of Simplicity and a structural advantage on one fort. And now we find ourselves almost dead even in experience and only one structure still in favor of Simplicity. 
Kerrigan's coming down. Simplicity, we'll see. They've got the mosh, but we'll see if they go in. They do not. They concede it. Don't want to fight into the choke. Do the garage and the blaze. And of course, Michael Udall did go Earthquake on that thrall, so unwilling to commit to that fight without the Kerrigan there. And to be honest with you, Dredd, I don't even know. That would have been one heck of a fight if it broke out, but uh, just moments away. Didn't happen. If you're, if you're Gale 4 Seasports, no matter how much you love the idea of invading a giant camp, it's really not incentivized when you look at the composition. Not only are offensive melee compositions really good uh, around, you know, major objectives like that, but then Kerrigan is amazing in tight corridors, Planet Cracker amazing in tight corridors, same with the Mosh Bay. It's just pretty much a, if I'm not fighting in a lane or over a shrine, I probably don't want to be fighting you. It should be the general rule for simplicity. It's part of the reason I, when I was talking about I, how confident Gale Force was to move up to Vision and just be like, yeah, we got this, is based on that exact same process. Is Territorial fights dominate here with the composition the simplicity has. Speaking of territory, Dreadnought, we've got double temple phase, top, bottom. No boss play available. Both camps were just picked up. This might just be a neutral, you know, conceding option. And we might see the same rotation. Guild Force is making an excellent rotation up. When this camp gets here, they will death ball this. They've already opened up this possibility. Instead, I'm going to show a little bit earlier, see if they can get the rotation out. This is a big moment to dive under this. Phoenix is showing bottom Dreadnought. This is going to be valuable time. It's a huge setback on yeah. the side of Simplicity. Gale Force Esports is getting so much out of this. Now it's going to be the shot transition. Gale Force try and force this fight. Phoenix is staying down there. The Planet Cracker goes out. Zuna looking for the big play. Prismat, he's coming in. He's going to get the drag. Earthquake's going to go down by a little bit of time. That's going to force out the Divine Shield. But Kerrigan, see if you can land that combo. Instead, Z the Roots are going to zone them out. But now, it's Simplicity, they're on the retreat. They're on the retreat, but they end up hitting the two-man combo. as five-man. Oh, look at that three-man. Mosh Pit ends up getting the hit there. Zuna trying to get the damage onto Mikey Doll, but he's able to survive. Combo number three goes down. Zuna very, very low in the corner, ends up dropping. Phoenix still trying his best on the split push pressure, able to take out at least about 33% out of that keep. We still have a significant part of that temple. Now keep in mind, the forts are down. The temples fire in the That's closest lane. If they are able to obtain the remaining shots there, that temple should get that. That's why you see the rotation already coming down. Now, Furion and team, I feel simplicity. This could be a big win if they pull this off, but if Gale Force can defend this, this should be enough here, Dredd. Will they show on the wave, though, is the question. Malfurion did not. Hanzo, I believe, did not either. The scout was there. Blaze is going to be showing through the wave. King Caffeine ends up getting flipped over. Drag not connecting there, but a lot of damage on the Fury as the silence lands with that isolation. Dragon Arrow bought the time needed. Fury is able to kite out. Kerrigan and Thrall are now looking to join this team. No 16 quite yet, Jay Howe, but it looks like these teams are not giving up these shots. If they can get the, the keep and then back out, they fall one shot short here. We'll see if they try and go back in, but the threat of 16 is there. Prismat getting that movement speed in that bush, and they are just short of that dread that i mean that would have been a major power play for simplicity to have that control i believe one maybe two shots would have been able to confirm that and we all know about shots i'm just amazed at how how much we saw on the side of gale force esports that they were willing to sit around with that siege on the top half of the map watching that phoenix split pressure on the bottom half but then made the rotation down but how late they ended up making it just from beginning to end it was very split but great decision making there for simplicity and it's why they've been able to hold their own in this game. Hold up, though. Flip on Azuna. Fury's going to get power slid on. No combo quite yet, but Indomitable is used. The boss still at 50%. It looks like Simplicity. They're willing to leash it, but there's going to be the power slide in, or excuse me, the tongue in, and that's going to be Fury going down instantly. Planet Cracker's going to be there. King Caffeine on the top side of the map. He's going to come in with a big flank. Divine Shield's going to be used onto Kerrigan. See if they get it. Here comes King Caffeine. The bunker's down, and so much damage goes out against Simplicity. King Caffeine gets the power slide. They're going to get the damage onto Michael Udall. Two-man mosh pit. That's going to be Gale Force dropping members, Dread. End up hitting another combo, and now three members of Gale Force are now down. Simplicity with all five alive. Is this boss win? It's looking like it. They're making the rotation out. Hosty wasting no time warping over the wall to be able to start this off. Hosty prep that bottom lane with the, you know, <laughs> kind of split push pressure, then prepped it with the control at a majority of those shots. Simplicity now wins this fight and now sit in a position to possibly march and end this game. It's by no means is 100% GG. Is it only a 12 minute boss? Yeah.
Hanzo obviously going to Redemption at one, but going Scatter Arrow at four, giving that extra damage towards things like this, and then having the cooldown reduction on the auto attacks. So Scatter Arrow, it looks like that of simplicity, they're just going to double temple this. This is, this is safe. Look at their team. Kerrigan, Siege capabilities, ETC, it's walking Phoenix. Kill Phoenix, and you have no opportunity to end the game whatsoever. You have to get a bunch of kills. But, you know, that's pretty realistic around a boss most of the time. But those shots on the other half, this confirms bottom keep. Shots on mid will get a majority. Shots on bottom will be able to secure middle keep 100%. No matter how this trades out, we see Simplicity find themselves in a position where they should be able to gain, again, both keeps if they would like, or at least an advantageous skirmish. But Gale Force recognizes Moshpit, long cooldown, not going to be here. See if they can take the fight, and if they're willing to concede, no matter what, as you said, that temple will fire, whether it's middle or bottom, will fire on that middle keep and net them potentially a second keep here after maintaining control of that bottom with Gale Force fighting their way back for the moment, getting things under control, at least for now. Scale Force does find themselves just a bit behind here as we reach the late game in Sky Temple. This is part of the beauty of having a global on your side on Sky Temple with that Dahaka pickup is it allows those kind of rotations where you consume a couple of those shots and be able to cycle down. They end up getting the rest of them and mid keep will, it's getting worked on. I actually don't know if it will drop 100% now that we saw the rotation away from the middle shrine as fast as we did. Looks like Kerrigan's got it. Last yeah, burst. Gale Force again, putting themselves in. Yeah, that That's should it. be enough. Calculator. Yeah, they've been calculating this the whole time. But now Gale Force with the Death Ball composition under the spell armor. They might try and make a big play here. Planet Cracker is zoning them out. There's going to be a two man combo. Zuna, all of a sudden, he's getting engaged upon. Zuna's in trouble. Pops that. Maelstrom. He's going to live for now, oh but a big my. toss in by Fury. With a three-man toss immediately after, Blaze is throwing down so much damage there. B-Kid doing his best to get the damage out, but nobody ends up actually dropping on the side of Simplicity. They hold off the siege here on that death ball on the top half of the map, but Gale Force Esports very much, you know they wish they had gotten that skirmish because it felt like it was kind of theirs. And also, I want to just appreciate the approach that we see from Simplicity whenever they do end up picking this Phoenix and how often they're comfortable just having them be that kind of offlane or abusing the shield, abu abusing that Planet Cracker. That one definitely a much more zoning Planet Cracker, <laughs> and, and it was effective too. Yeah, it bought them time, but they still end up losing the keep. The one thing that Simplicity has going for them now, they'll get control of the eye, get control of the rotations, but also more importantly, they'll have level 20. And Gale Force, by the time the next Temple Phase spawns, likely will not. You can see two minutes before that boss comes up. The Siege Giants here will alleviate catapult pressure, but Gale Force still likely, unless they can get a significant amount of XP, they will still likely defend against this. If I'm Simplicity, I am just neutral on these wave clear. If you clear the minions, you're sending experience over to Gale Force. If you stand by them, you just kind of hold. Obviously, in the top lane, you want to rid of the catapults, but 20 almost here for Simplicity. Gale Force, they're going to have to take a tough fight here, Dread. They could willingly concede it, but they're going to be down three keeps if they do. Yeah. And that's a very tough spot. I, I, I mean, we, in theory, they can. But, you know, when it comes to probability of winning the game at that point, it is so close to zero that I would like to see Gale Force try and risk and take this fight out. And it, I, I feel like it's probably safe to expect that they will do so. Question is, when do they make that rotation and how do they make it? Minu Wave on top pressured out. Middle Wave has not been pressured out for them. So visually, they aren't going to be able to stop that whatsoever. And I is controlled by Simplicity. It looks like they're going to wait out the 20 just purely on the fact that Blaze is willing to stay for an extra lane. I mean, you're all in on a team fight. The thing is, Gale Force wins a team fight. They easily go top lane. So they do have a win condition by way of team fight. But the time period that you are able to make that fight happen becomes very, very limited. Hosty is going to sniff out, see if they're on that camp. You can see that Fury holding in the bush for now. Several members of Gale Force have shown in the mid lane. I'm just going to go ahead and change our scope here a little bit for half a second towards what we see coming up in a moment, which is boss. 25 seconds out on the boss. Now that we saw that forfeited completely, wow. we see it completely forfeited over on the side of Gale Force Esports. They hold off. Didn't get the keep. They didn't get the keep. But the biggest thing is now the boss. That's their only recovery. If I'm Simplicity, all I do is feign interest, use you know the Phoenix split push a little bit more with the Planet Cracker Global, buy a little bit of time, and then use my triple keep to win this game. 
They're going to try and get keep right here. Catapults are cleared. Fury going in very aggressively. The spell armor's there. He's going to get the stun onto Zuna. You can see there's going to be a big follow-up as B-Kid goes in, and now all of a sudden we've got the fight. Planet Cracker is out for the moment. King Caffeine has slid. Earthquake is down there trying to keep the fight. That Dragon, Dragon Arrow is there. It's locking several members of Simplicity down. Huge groundbreaker there. K1 Pro, he can fall as he is on the Uther, but that the cannot. Phoenix cannot. Mosh Pit is here, Dre. It's going to be buying time, though. They just need to buy time for the game to be able to end because they have so much catapult pressure. Priz ends up hitting that first drag. Zuna kiting around, trying to buy as much as he can. King Caffeine power slide through, gets the Divine Shield. He even goes on the back line onto Fury. K1 Pro able to kite out, but look at the catapults now. Two, one on mid, three on bottom. Getting the damage there, but that mini wave actually just spawns, saving damage on the core significantly. Priz ends up getting the back 98% and counting. K1 Pro obviously went the movement speed on that hammer there. No redemption this time. Blaze forced to retreat back. Uther will fall. Kerrigan 40 seconds out. Double temple phase Look here. Boss is now available. Phoenix and ETC potentially looking for the back door. I don't think that's enough damage though, Trent. It's not right now. It absolutely is not. But they're posturing for the future because they know this boss is going to be the weak condition. A temple though. They okay. took down that keep. They could channel one temple we here. We have to consider travel time. Boss travel time is about 30 seconds. Plus the keep sitting in between it. Now that's 40 for it to make it all the way towards the base minimum. So Gale Force Esports has higher siege potential, ignoring the boss than they do by capturing it in the first place. Those shots on top are going to be there for about 15 to 20 seconds out. That's enough damage to rid more onto the core and down to 50%. So Gale Force can't do anything with that boss whatsoever. They have to be able to rotate up and stop these shots. Kerrigan back up. Uther still 15 seconds away. Simplicity, all they need is temple shots to end this game. Boss unlikely to end bot lane just yet, but you can see the big fight potentially here. There's the interrupt onto the warp. There's going to be the Dragon Zero, and Hosty instantly falls here, Dreadnought. Prismat, he's trying to get out. There's the power slide by King Caffeine. He bolts out. Kerrigan's he's going to go dodge core. just a little bit. Kerrigan and Doc are going core. They're going to make it happen right here, right now, but Blaze, Blaze has gone back. Blaze has gone back. There's only two catapults, I believe, on that bottom lane to be able to survive. If they can keep those alive a little bit longer, it might be able to help their odds. The shot's being captured on mid. Dahaka went it. top, so Zuna's winning a one versus one on the core, and they're denying both the shots in mid and top, but now the core of damage is Doc coming is from on, the boss. Doc is on Temple! Doc has got 40, it! 30. Garrosh has got to get up He's here! He's got to drag. He has to drag Garrosh off before he gets to that point. He didn't land the two. Oh, he oh, got the knockback! Back. He oh got the knockback! Oh, are you kidding me? Gosh, the boss! Or no the no way! <laughs> what? The knockback! On the top, King knocked back the Garrosh, so the last shot can be consumed by Simplicity. Are you kidding me?